So welcome everyone uh, to our Meet the Innovators webinar. Uh, this is an event of the Back to School campaign. It's organized in partnership between the STEMIT Career Advisors Network, the STEM Alliance and its industry partners, and Scientix. Today, you'll learn about the two companies that have recently joined the STEM Alliance, Cleverbook and Kobe AI. You'll learn about their innovative teaching solutions, and you will hear from our speakers about their jobs, the courage it takes to jump into entrepreneurship, and how imagination and creativity can lead your students to unexpected STEM careers. My name is Eddie Grenmeyer, and I'm a pedagogical and project officer for European Schoolnet, and I'm the coordinator of the Career Advisors Network, and it's my great pleasure to be your host. So we have with us Rocio Benito, Ivana Kovac, and Chanel Martinez. They'll be present in the chat if you need any technical assistance, so do not hesitate to reach out to them. Uh, if you have any questions, they'll be happy to answer them. Before we get started, though, a few questions, a few housekeeping rules. So there's a few things. The signatures list, it is mandatory for us to uh, prove that the event happened and it's necessary for you to receive your certificate of attendance. My colleagues are sharing the link for it in the chat right now. So please take a second to sign it. It will it won't take long and that way you will receive a certificate of attendance. I repeat. It is mandatory to get a certificate. At the end of the webinar, uh, we'll share a feedback form. And so if we would very much appreciate if you could uh, provide us with your feedback on what we did well and how we can improve our events uh, in the future, that feedback is going to be very, very important for us to do even better. And finally, the webinar is recorded uh, and, you're, and it's going to be shared on YouTube. So your cameras and your microphones are off. So we'll be share, uh, taking your questions in the chat. So please do not hesitate to put your questions for your for the speakers in the chat and we'll ask them after each presentation. Now let's get to business. So first, let me welcome uh, Dr. Daria Yegino, Yegorina, CEO of Clever Books. Daria is a TEDx top global thought leader. She's the winner, among other awards, of Digital Female Leaders Awards in the category of entrepreneurship in 2018. She was named an innovator by Irish Time in 2018. She was awarded Young Irish Entrepreneur in 2016, Women in IT in 2019, and Young European Leader in 2020-2021. And today she introduces Clever Books. Clever Books is driving innovation in, in the education sector by setting standards for the use of augmented reality based technology in the classroom. It provides augmented reality solutions for K-12 STEM education and covers the area of digital literacy and skill development. Daria, thank you for joining us today. The floor is yours. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. So um, I would like to introduce you to the solution that may be useful in your classrooms, but let's uh, start with the augmented reality. So what is augmented reality? I just wanted to tell you if you haven't met this fantastic technology, um, you can see here on the screen one of the examples of the augmented reality of the products that we do. And augmented reality is basically visual objects popping up through the camera of your mobile device. You can see the augmented reality is something that you can uh, hold, hold in your hand as a virtual object, and that makes a difference in the classroom. So let's move to the next slide. Now, now let's talk what augmented reality can bring to your classroom. Augmented reality and augmented classroom, specifically the solution of Clever Books, can uh, can help the uh, um, can help you to um, work on three main pillars within your classroom. So one of them is the exploration of the content. Is when you see something already pre-designed um, in different subjects. And we have that for a STEM range of subjects covering geometry um, and mathematics, covering geography and social sciences, engineering and space. It provides you the opportunity with several tools within the augmented classroom to create your own augmented reality. But uh, what, what I mean by this, there are several tools that help you to um, create the gamified test when, they, when you can select different objects based on your subject and you can use it for uh, the STEM subject as well as language learning. And then kids can physically go and search for the objects with their mobile devices 
find them and, um, and answer the questions that you presented. You have the opportunity to build your own scenarios in the augmented reality with the tools we provide, is when you select the scene and, and then uh, the kids can build either historical scene or recreate something you learned in geography um, or do something that is um, helpful for them to learn what you've read in the book. And we have also created a new, um, new app for you where you can augment any picture in that book. Or maybe you're working in school of um, by creating the uh, um, weekly or monthly school news newspaper, and on the and this uh, school newspaper can be also augmented um, and create uh, where the objects will pop up on it. You can record the sound and you can add videos to enjoy the opportunities of uh, using augmented reality and creating some different experiences um, for your kids. So this is a little bit of understanding of how the whole solution works. So we know um, how difficult the situations at schools are with mobile devices. We know how difficult it could be to have tablets uh, for every kid. So that's why we have adopted this solution for any school and any classroom and any needs. If you have a touch board or smart board in your school, the solution works on that uh, on the touch board and smart board. If you have, for example, just one mobile device and nothing else, you can project it on the wall. Um, if you have a classroom or a mix um, of different devices like laptops, uh, computers, a couple of tablets, you can simultaneously um, do that on all the devices. The beauty of the solution is that it can work remotely and it can work also within the same, um, the same classroom. Teacher is in the control of what kids can see what they can do within this augmented reality playground. And that's what you, how you can imagine this solution. This is the playground, the virtual playground that you create with the augmented reality. And you can let the kids um, either explore different scenarios or different objects, different subjects. You can, uh, you can make them take tests in uh, using the augmented reality. You can create different scenes and uh, different projects within the solution using absolutely uh, different um, um, hardware or different types of devices. It could work on Chromebooks, as I said, laptops, desktops, mobile devices, and it doesn't matter who has which device. So currently we have the, translated the solution in 13 languages and we provide full um, training for the teachers as well as the number of um, workshops and, um, and CPD courses on how to use augmented reality and adopt it to your curriculum, to your lessons. We have uh, the uh, library of activity plans, which are created by different um, teachers around the world. And if you fancy to add your own one to share with the community, feel free to do that. The contents um, that we have um, are aligned with the global curriculums and also curricula and also aligned with the local curricula as well. Um, and it's ta tailored for kids with different levels of learning. We are very keen on personalized learning and we think that some kids can um, visually understand better. Some kids need to do something. That's why this solution is fully interactive. So currently we have over than 4,000 um, educators around the world using this solution. And uh, the, the solution is fully GDPR compliant. We do not require any registration from the kid. So that's only the teacher who is doing the registration and uh, the kids are signing up to the lesson that teacher broadcasts in the real time uh, with the one-time sign-in link. Uh, we are present in more than 60 countries around the world with more than 70 ambassadors who like our solution and do the workshops in local communities. So this is a little bit of the awards and recognitions uh, where we are present and who um, wrote about us, who um, believes in our solution and we truly I'm interested to know what you think as well. So if you have, um, if you are interested in trying it out, uh, do reach out to us and we'll be happy to uh, provide you the uh, uh, trial of the solution um, in exchange for your feedback. So um, we truly believe that uh, we can influence the and lead the digital transformation of education because uh, the true revolution of uh, education system lays in using the digital tools and modern tools in the modern classroom. And I think as you're all here today, you truly believe that if you use digital tools, you can help kids to develop the uh, skills for the future.
because we don't know which jobs can pop up in the future, but we definitely know that technology is going to be there. So that's why STEM is gaining popularity and that's why it's so, uh, it's so important. So using the augmented reality helps to, to develop specific skill set for the kids and helps them to be excited and interested in learning. So that's all for me. Thank you. Well, th thank you very much, Daria. It's been very interesting. I, I must say you, you're making uh, augmented reality very much alive. Uh, and I wish I'd, I'd had augmented reality when I was a, when I was a Me student. Too. Um, <laughs> it can be a bit daunting to talk science uh, facing a book. Um, but I guess with uh, those new solutions and those new innovations of yours, uh, it's going to be much easier for students in the future uh, or in the present for that matter. Uh, to get to get really engaged uh, with science, STEM in general, uh, and augmented reality. Now, you've you've made augmented reality sound really really exciting, uh, but we're not just here to talk about the solutions. We're 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 here to talk about you and about STEM careers in general. And and the the people our two speakers tonight really really embody innovation that's why you you were introduced as innovation as innovators and that's why uh, you've won awards for your innovations so how did you, daria how did you get into that job that you have today was it a job that you were planning thinking or envisioning when you were in school were you studying for it <laughs> no <laughs> that's the would be the short answer so I was um, just basically, I'm a, I'm a curious mind and I was always looking into new technologies and something that is popping up. You would be surprised that augmented reality, although it's today considered a new technology and a, an emerging technology, it's not new. It was developed decades, decades, decades ago. It's just people didn't come to use it and didn't come to apply the technology. But um, areas and uh, in business and also and I'm really happy that, it's, that it has found its application in education. I would say for me it was uh, mainly the overview of um, what I was studying and how, how I was studying and um, what uh, what can be improved for the kids today because as a mom I see my daughter excited about school and being there and doing and dealing with the books rather than um, having access to to modern technologies so what i have seen is that the important thing is not to take away the mobile device and the internet um, it's teaching them how to use that properly and for the benefits of education because we're here not to we are not always uh, with the kids when they are crossing the street on the um, crossing the street and they need to select the green or the red light we're here to educate them the crossing the street on the green light is appropriate so using technology in the way to educate themselves find the information is appropriate and uh, and that's that's the most important thing that moved me um, and my mindset into working uh, into working towards the education and how it could be um, revolutionized with the simple and easy to use digital tools. And why augmented reality? It's an exciting technology. It brings something to life and you can see your own room, your own environment, and then suddenly something pops up um, and uh, you can interact with that digital object. And that's where we are all going to the, uh, um, to the metaverse, to the education where you can visualize things, not only in the book. I think that um, by making the revolution in education um the question that pushed me most to um to do this was the following when i was um speaking on one of the events and i asked people do you believe that your parents had better education than your grandparents and there were a couple of hands coming up and then i asked the question do you believe that your kids will have better education than you and there was silence which means that people are not sure if the education is going the right direction. That's why I'm also always inspired by teachers who are joining today or educators who are joining this session today because they are curious, they are interested, and then they are trying to change uh, the way we educate kids. And I think that's one of the most important things. So that's what moves me towards that direction as well. Excellent. Well, that's that's optimism for you, and I think you're de really delivering on your quest to make education better. Uh, we've got a question. So I had a little question of my own, but I see here uh, that we have a question from Connor. 
uh, in the chat. So Connor is a primary school teacher in Ireland and has two quick questions. One, could uh, could they contact you to learn more about your um, innovations? And two, could they ask about your business model? Does the teacher buy a nap or is it a yearly subscription? Connor, I am in Ireland. We can meet. <laughs> it's going to be easier. <laughs> But yeah, so um, there are um, the subscription is uh, we have a we have a, a subscription as a software as a service based solution. Uh, you just need a mobile mobile device, ideally, but it works on desktops as well. So for everybody who is interested, we can do the demo. Or I can share uh, the webinars that that are passed and recorded, so how you can use the solution. But to make it simple, you can uh, get all the printouts. Um, through the platform and print them yourselves. If you're looking for a quality printed map that you can hold on the wall because it's it's quite big, it's difficult to find the printer of that can print A1 size. Uh, you can order that from Clever Books. But the subscription is quite easy. Just um, the more you buy, obviously, the more licenses you get for the kids, the uh, the cheaper it, it is. But the most expensive, it's uh, five um, euro per year per student. All right. Well, I hope that I think this probably answer answers Connor's question. Um, then one final question for you, and uh, Daria, what's your advice for teachers to help them nurture an interest in STEM in their students? Are there, for example, special kids, uh, special skills, sorry, to do your job that you can encourage students to explore? What do you what's your advice for students and teachers? OK. I will go with this last question because it will answer the first question. Perfect. The most important skill that teachers need to develop in kids is natural curiosity to learn and explore the information. If this skill is there, then kids become lifetime learners. And this is the most important skill in STEM or in any other area throughout our lives. If, um, let's say, 30, 40 years ago, when you study at school and you want to be a doctor, I'm just going to give you the example. You need to study some certain set of subjects. But today, the specialities of doctors are so diverse that once one, two, three subjects are not enough. You need to have a broader mindset because the technology is there and you need to have those digital skills. So curiosity and the interest in learning would be two main uh, factors on how you can actually make sure that the kids are going to be ready for the future and um, how you can make them curious. You just need to diversify how you deliver the subjects. If it's going to be just books or posters or maybe printouts, it's one thing. But if you're going to bring some elements of technology, it doesn't need to be necessarily like, OK, we're going to have all the time classes using digital tech. No, it doesn't need to be like this, but some dosed uh, like put the some doses of technology throughout your lessons will already develop that level of curiosity because if it's a little bit of augmented reality today and and promise to be a little bit of augmented reality doing something else tomorrow so that will be my answer well thank you very much daria uh yes I, and i think you're, you're making a very good point that sometimes the skills you need are not necessarily the skills that are written on paper that you should be learning as a student. Uh, that's that's a big focus for us in the STEAMIT project. It's all about integrated STEM teaching, but it's all about inquiry, problem solving. Uh, it's it's about curiosity indeed, and, and wanting to find solutions and being creative in the process of finding them. Well, thank you very, very much, Daria. It's been a great presentation. I'm sure everybody's really excited about your solutions. I know I am. Now, I think it's time uh, to meet our second speaker for the evening. Uh, Miha Sherman is the founder and CEO of Codebrainer and the creator of Kobe AI, a smart classroom that helps teachers teach coding. Miha has more than 25 years of experience with programming. He's mentored many developers, and that has led him, led him into the field of education six years ago. With his pedagogical knowledge, Miha is bringing innovative teaching techniques into the digital K-12 education environment. Miha, thank you for joining us today. The floor is yours. Hi. Oh, thanks for having me. I will try to take control. 
Yes. I guess it works. Yes, you've got control. Yeah, great. So thanks again um, for having me. I'm Micha. I'm the founder of CodeBrainer, uh, where we created Kobe AI. And so uh, we are really honored to be here as we were really working hard within the Impact Ad Tech. That is uh, a special initiative that was uh, launched uh, within the European School Net, uh, where we were working hard on our product and we were blessed by being best in class. And this is really an honor for us. And thanks for having us that really excelled during the program. So I always start with a brief uh, history of why we started uh, our Kobe AI. And uh, we, we, were, uh, we were teaching a lot of uh, coding for, for uh, students uh, within our area. And we wanted to offer one-on-one -on -one mentor against peers on the web. But uh, at the time when we started, this was not quite uh, easily possible. This is why we went back into the class. We went back in, into the class and start teaching coding. But what we did, we did one really clever thing where one of us was a teacher and the other one was instructor. And this role of instructor was really important one as instructor went around the class, he was helping students move on with their tasks. This means that we really didn't leave any student alone with problems, with challenges. This is why they were able to move along with the lecture that the teacher was giving. And this is really the part that became Kobe AI later on. Based on that role, we have developed a platform that enables us to do one-on-one -on -one mentoring on the web. And as we were developing it, we saw that this is a great opportunity to offer uh, this kind of system to teachers. And this is where we started to work with teachers, get their feedbacks and really bring the best, uh, the best features we can for them. So what are the benefits of Kobe AI for teachers. We know that coding is hard, but it's also hard to teach. And I can, cannot explain in real words, but in a sense, also teachers are guided with, with our Kobe AI, with our embedded lessons plan, and they can, let's say, relax a little bit and just be teachers, just be motivators for students. And this is the most important part that teachers have. What teachers get is also an overview of the classroom. And because we have a smart assistant, our Kobe AIs looks at the code that students are writing in real time and gives suggestions to the teacher. Also, everything is cloud-based. This means that no installation is needed. Everything can be used right there and right now. And teacher can just stop working, teaching the students out of the box. So the important part is that we also embedded lessons plan. This means that we have shortened the time for, for preparation for teachers. They, uh, we offer a, a lot of times of content, voice, text, images, and most importantly, we offer assignments. Teacher can see the lesson plan, prepare for the lesson, and also get help during the lesson. Everything is out of the box. What we try to, to showcase is the transition from block-based uh, programming to text-based programming. We have developed special parts that I will show later that enables us to teach uh, students from quite young and develop the skills later. So we kind of take students from zero knowledge to writing in code in Python, which is really nice. 
So what do the teachers say after uh, we have done a piloting period within the Europe? A lot of teachers say that this is really a time saver as uh, they were able just to take Kobe, start teaching. They were really able also to help shy students using our, uh, our communication tool within the, the Kobe. And what is important for us, uh, teachers responded in a way that they say that there was a helping hand there that they were really more confident by using our Kobe AI while they were teaching. The important part is that we really put some pressure on teachers because computer science really changes a lot during the time. And some of the teachers were hesitant of starting teaching programming because of these changes that happen all the time. But with Kobe AI, they were able to go through the courses themselves and really saw how we structured uh, content step by step. And this really made them confident to start working and helping children move along with the lectures. So what does the Kobe offer to the students? Like I said, we have integrated communication and one of the best feedback was that students were communicating with teachers and asking questions there at the moment. This means that the shy, the shy students that would wait until the end of the class could, could ask questions while they were happening. And this is really good because uh, it makes them learn faster and uh, uh, answers from teacher can be more uh, in depth, more linked to their challenges. Also, when students go from knowing nothing, playing and programming to programming in Python. So in real development environment, and this was really exciting for them. One of the things the, uh, that the students really liked is that they also used a full blown IDE, this means development environment. They were really feeling like they, they know something they can use also within the, uh, the later uh, job. And this was really inspiring, uh, inspiring for them. We offer a lot of languages that teachers can use here from web development uh, to JavaScript and other languages can be added but most important thing we do is bring them from block-based programming to the uh, written programming with using game-based uh, game, uh, game learning. This means that within Blockly, they will be uh, directing the hero through mazes, picking up stuff using blocks. But when they move to the Python, they will use uh, instructions to move this hero around. And this way they are already understanding the part of algorithmic thinking, but just adapting to the usage of instructions. So written, uh, written or text-based programming. So what do the students say, say about the Kobe AI? And I say that I will turn it a, a bit around and said what uh, one uh, response from teacher was, that, uh, that he doesn't know what we did, but he was just looking at the classroom and they were learning Python and they were really motivated by driving the hero around the amazing. And it was something that he was really impressed by. Also, like I said, children really loved the way that they can express uh, questions with chat because this is their way of expressing in the moment. So who's this Kobe AI that I really talk about? It's a name for technologies. We, we have uh, developed so many technologies that we decided to give this uh, uh, bundle of technologies a name and give it a bit of personality. 
We have built everything on scalable infrastructure. This means the schools can really adapt and we can really adapt to the needs of the school, needs of the countries, customize everything. We have, we have uh, dedicated a lot of time for keeping data private uh, and really uh, concerned about uh, how to deal with the data that we, we really gain trust within teachers and students. So it says next year, but uh, this is the current year. We are really excited that uh, in this year we will be sharing game editor with teachers. This means that teachers will be able to prepare mazes for their students. We will also add quizzes within the chat. This is really important part as brings interactivity uh, to the questions students have and the question that teachers can ask students. Also, we added unplugged computer science. This means that we can approach even younger students meaning that they can play around the class and learn about computer science without really using a computer. We will also be bringing a new content uh, with JavaScript gaming. This is for those really bright minds that uh, do want to do something more in computer science. And we have really heterogeneous groups around the Europe. Some of them are just starting to learn while others are hacking everything they see. So this is for those really motivated students. So what is the value for uh, education? The more we develop technology, the more we work with uh, this uh, uh, artificial intelligence, the more we see the importance of teachers because they are motivators. They can share the experience they can really point students forward. And this is really important. The other great uh, benefit is that we can work with heterogeneous groups and we enable blended learning environment. This means that some of the students can be at home, some of the students can be in the classroom and uh, also teacher can teach on uh, dislocated location. And this really works and this is really important for us. So we have been piloting uh, in previous year. We were present in four countries and we are really thankful for uh, Impact EdTech and European school nets that offer us this possibility to go to the schools and really gain another insights uh, into uh, our system. What were we also really proud of is gender equality because on the side of the teachers, on the side of the, uh, the students, we really saw a great opportunity because technology is really where the gender is uh, scared, uh, scarce. And this is really important that this is happening. So uh, we were really proud of that fact as well. So this was my presentation. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'm really, uh, I would really like to answer them. Also, if you want to see a demo, please contact us and we will show you how the Kobe looks in, in, in live because it's really different. Just uh, still pictures doesn't present what it looks like. Perfect. Thank you very much, Miha, for uh, sharing with us Kobe AI and your innovation in teaching coding uh, to students. I'm sure it will inspire many teachers. Uh, and I've seen a couple of questions popping up in the chat about innovative technologies, which, which we'll come back to uh, in just a moment. And uh, I'd like to take both your, your take and your opinion on that. But uh, for now, you know what's coming next. We want to learn a little bit more about you. So uh, I guess you've heard the questions before, but let me go back to them again. How did you get into the job you have today? Was it something that you envisioned while you were at school? Um, well, I guess not in the, uh, the whole. I was really lucky enough to be really interested in technology from really quite on. And I was uh, developing 
when I started uh, primary school, I was already researching, buying computers. Nobody understood what, what I was doing, but it, it was really interesting for me. But I never envisioned that I will be in the field of education. Uh, and this was really something that happened while I was uh, mentoring uh, some of the colleagues because Kodik is on one side a really, really good job for, uh, for uh, ones that uh, are, uh, uh, want to tackle it, want to learn. But on the other side, it's really hard to learn. Uh, and this is what I, uh, why I was inspired because I had a different way of learning and uh, it helped others. So this is why I'm, I'm trying to share it. Thank you very much. Um, so the next question, I guess, comes back to what's your advice for students? Uh, you know, are there skills they should be pursuing? Because you said you were into technology very early on. Uh, I guess not every student is that intuitively into STEM, but it doesn't mean that that interest can't be sparked later on. So do you have any advice? Yeah, um, of course. Um, it's uh, it's quite amazing that even uh, even now uh, I always uh, get uh, across the uh, the um, the fear the students have in trying out coding because when I started you really can broke a computer but now this cannot happen. Uh, well, I actually started by deleting the whole system, and <laughs> it was really <laughs> amazing uh, part on my uh, uh, for for my start. But now there they have so many tools, and it really uh, it's trying out, experimenting, uh, installing new things, and I think that uh, kids nowadays are not encouraged that well uh, into just trying it out. Uh, and I, I guess that the practical approach really, really leads uh, into a good thing. Because when you're doing things in practical, you really look at them in a different perspective. Um, I was blessed enough to, to have a good lessons in physics uh, that were really practical. But I did not have this luxury with chemistry, for, for example. And I, I never pursued chemistry, but it's fun. If you saw experiments and you played with liquids and so on, it would be a really, really fun. Uh, this is why I also encourage people to, to do a lot of experiments in STEM. It can be math, it can be physics, it can be everything technological, see, uh, see a lot of stuff, but uh, in, in some way, sometimes it's restricting for teachers to show everything to students. And uh, it, but it's, it's just a way it's worth pursuing because um, I can see that bright minds are almost everywhere and it if you if we start some stars uh, it will be just a pleasure to to see what these minds will create further down the, the line <laughs> yes thank you it's a true like shaping up diamonds in the rough and it's all about sparking that interest which um i guess is going to take me to the the questions to the chat there's been a, a couple of questions that sort of revolved around the same idea and and um Miha, you've just touched a little bit on this but I, i'd like to take you know take your um, opinion again and daria's opinion as well uh, new technology innovative technologies can be challenging of course they can be challenging for students uh, as you've you've mentioned, Miha, but they can be challenging for teachers as well, who can be a little bit uh, scared of trying out new things and, and may feel that they're not equipped in the first place. Uh, 
to handle those new technologies and, and even less to teach them to their students. So do you have any advice, any any reassuring words uh, for teachers um, going or, or being intrigued with exploring your solutions? Uh, whoever wants to go first, Let, let's go back to Daria for a second, for example. I can I can go first. So um, first of all, we need to be brave to try new stuff. Some of you may not uh, were not born when the mobile devices came to the market, but we were not scared to try new stuff, and we all hold mobile devices now. I can tell you a story. Um, what happened to me when I was speaking in I think 2018? I was invited to one foundation who invited schools, and I was speaking in Rome, and I was delivering a presentation on how easy it is to work um, with the augmented reality. Intentionally, I asked um, teachers in the room who never tried it, who, and then I asked the question, among those who never tried it, who don't want to try it at all? And then I dragged one person to the stage, uh, and I asked her to use the augmented reality right there. So she was saying, no, 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 it's so difficult. It's so difficult. I, I don't want to do this. I said, okay, you just try it out and that's it. Uh, so I gave her the, 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 the tablet with the, um, um, with the app installed. That's all you need to do. Then she had, it was a marker-based solution. So she had a printed um, picture and this tablet was connected to the, uh, um, to the presentation. So it, it took her literally 30 seconds to start using it. And she was so excited. So I had to invite her to leave the stage because she was too engaged into playing and I needed to continue with my presentation. So um, the, there is no need to be technically savvy to use augmented reality. It's simple way, like you install mobile applications, you install the same way this application and you just interact with it. It's it's really intuitive in, in many cases. So I'm trying any new technology, and I think not only augmented reality, but like what Miha is presenting here, it's super easy. You just need to try it out. And trust me, kids can even guide you. That's a very good point. I, th I think it, anyone who's a parent, uh, or who knows a child, and teachers do know plenty of child, of children, uh, knows that, that a child can be your teacher quite often when it comes to new technologies. Exactly. <laughs> Thank Let you them very be proud. Much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daria. Miha, what about you? Do you have one final piece of advice for anyone uh, being intrigued in exploring your solutions? Um, yeah, uh, during the uh, all the interviews we had with teachers, and we really had quite a lot. Uh, we interviewed uh, more than hundred teachers. I was really amazed by their ingenuity. They they really like to learn them as well, uh, and I was amazed by that. And what is left uh, for teachers to do is just try it out. And like Daria mentioned. Uh, we also had cases where students and teachers went along uh, and tried our uh, system and really helped both student and the teacher uh, because you are taking uh, most of the time taking these young bright minds uh, helping you. It motivates them and also it motivates you as a teacher so that you pursue in trying uh, and uh, going through the system. And once you do that step, I, I think that all the teachers are capable of doing it because they're really resourceful. They know how to do it. They have a lot of knowledge. And in that way, uh, I think that just the first step is the, the, the biggest obstacles we always envision. But once we take it, it's already halfway done. <laughs> well, then there you go. Thank you very much, Miha. I think if we're going to take one final lesson for all of that is that uh, you've both really emphasized the point that it's it's important to encourage students to be creative, to be curious and to explore. Uh, I guess teachers can take their own advice and just go for it. Explore the solutions, even if they're scared. 
sometimes as the help of their students and everybody working together will find the solutions and, and really get into STEM. So thank you so very much to the both of you uh, for presenting your innovations and telling a little bit more about your own careers uh, and your own journeys. I'm sure it will um, be a perfect example of good role models uh, for teachers to present to their students as well. Now, I think we're coming to a close, maybe a little bit early on this webinar, uh, but I just wanted to take this opportunity uh, after, of course, thanking both of our speakers and thanking everyone who joined us uh, today to remind you that this is one of the many events of the Back to School campaign. And there's a few more coming your way, so make sure to check them out. You can see the link here. You just have to check the STEM Alliance website. The theme this year, STEM jobs of the future. So we discovered two STEM jobs of the future today uh, that had their roots in really amazing stories, and there's more amazing stories to come. Another thing is uh, we're talking about innovation and augmented reality and coding and new technologies in the classroom today. Uh, Scientix TV is a new technology for us. We're trying something new uh, and we're trying to have some fun on television while talking about grand, great STEM. Uh, and last month or this month, I guess, we were talking about STEM careers and how to present them to your students. So do not forget to check the latest episode of Scientix TV and uh, a little bit of insight in what's coming up in the future. Next month, we're talking about new technologies, new immersive technologies in the classroom, uh, AR, VR, XR. So lots of good things to come as well. So remember to check it out. And then finally, the last reminder, the last um, little piece of information that you all must hear is the next Scientix conference is coming up and the registrations are opening very, very soon. Uh, the conference is one of the major science education networking events in Europe. It will provide an overview of the challenges and opportunities in science education in Europe, and it will highlight the potential and possibilities that the Scientix community can bring about. So learn, connect, and generate new ideas for inspiring STEM education. Check out the Scientix website, of course, for more information. As I said, registration will open very, very soon. One final reminder that the uh, form still needs to be signed if you haven't done it, the signatures form. So remember to click on the link in the chat. Uh, I'll ask my colleagues to share it again one last time to make sure that everyone can get their certificate for this event. Uh, it will only take a second and you will receive your certificate and the feedback form in an email. All right then, thank you very much. Uh, Daria, Miha, thank you very much for sharing your thank stories you. and you. for showing thank us you. around your innovation and your new technologies. It's been very exciting and I'm sure our student and uh, students and their teachers, of course, uh, will be very, very intrigued and will explore them in depth. Thank you again to everyone who has joined us tonight. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to be your host. Thank you, uh, Rocio, and thank you, Chanel, and thank you, Ivana, for uh, moderating the chat. And I guess we'll see you next time. Have a lovely Bye. evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.